I guess let's set assumptions uh, to, to start the conversation here. Sh I mean, will this spike in cases right now? What are your assumptions? Does this again lead to a similar shutdown uh, in the U.S. economy, similar to what we had back in April? I think we are going to have intermittent periods of shutdown throughout, you know, really over the next year or so, you know, while we're still grappling with this virus. But I wouldn't expect that we're likely to see a wholesale shutdown of the U.S. economy like we saw earlier this year in March. I think you're going to see in intermittent periods of shutdowns across different regions, different cities, different counties of the U.S. as we continue to see cases rise. But by and large, I think on a, on a holistic level for the U.S., you're going to continue to see the economy sort of moving forward from the depths of the recession that we saw back in March and April of this year. All right. So, Aaron, from a multi-asset perspective, obviously, uh, you know, the area that you overlook, what's, what's the tilt? Is it moderately risk-on? Is it fully risk-on? Uh, how do I approach the next few months? Sure. So the, the three things that we think are really important to keep in mind for portfolios over the next year or so is to remain liquid, to remain, you know, very careful on leverage, as well as to be really focused on cash flow in your investments. And so with those three sort of underpinnings for how we're constructing our portfolios, we're really looking for high quality investments that we think can withstand a slow growth environment. We are expecting that over the next year, we will continue to see economies normalize and markets normalize as well. But so that that does, you know, sort of arbor for a slight risk on portfolio or a modest risk on portfolio with, you know, for investors. But I really think you have to be really focused and nuanced in terms of where you're picking your investment. So moving up in quality uh, and moving really up in terms of mm. looking for strong secular growth companies. Let's just break now, just crossing the line, Aaron. We're just going to interrupt briefly to give our viewers the latest in terms of the fix here in China for the yuan. Uh, it's the first time it's been fixed below the seven level since March. So you're looking at 6.9943 for the yuan fix versus the US dollar. We also have a line from the PBOC, a PBOC official saying that the yuan will be more directly traded or will be directly traded with more currencies. So that is a line from the PBOC. Again, the currency fix, the yuan fix, 6.99, uh, first time below 7 since March. Erin, uh, I'm interested in, in your views on U.S. equities and why you wouldn't want to have more exposure uh, to what's happening in EM, given that it seems that China is something of a safe haven in terms of the growth prospects here and the risks around the virus. Yeah, so I think that's a really good question. And, and certainly you've seen a bias for investors to be longer U.S. equities, you know, over the last six months or so relative to the rest of the world. And you're now starting to see a catch up with the rest of the world, both with respect to how they've handled the virus, as well as re with respect to economic growth. And so we have actually um, started to add back risk in a emerging market, specifically within Chinese equities, um, given the you know, sort of broad macro steps that they've taken, as well as the fiscal and monetary steps that the Chinese authorities have taken of late in order to support their economy. And you are seeing, you know, clearly a sharper reversal in terms of the economic growth trajectory um, in, in China relative to other countries, including the U.S. Uh, when it comes to the debt markets, are you concerned that we're reaching a, a tipping point, as the likes of Man Group suggest, given the amount of debt that's been raised, uh, particularly in the U.S.? And where would you want to be positioned in the credit markets in light of those issues? Well, so when you look at when you're looking at debt markets and you're looking at fixed income debt markets, you know, you clearly have seen a tremendous amount of fiscal, you know, sort of expansion over the last three months, you know, well beyond, I think, what anyone would have expected even at the start of this year. That, I think, though, has to be really countered against the fact that we are in an environment where global growth is expected to, uh, you know, remain very, very low over the next couple of years. And so without inflation really starting to percolate and really starting to move above central bank targets, um, which I don't expect is going to happen, I think you're going to see, uh, you know, fixed income markets uh, and, and fixed income duration remain well bid in markets. And so it's, I don't think we're at that tipping point yet with respect to, to debt markets. I think we'll get to that tipping point once you start to see inflation starting to rear its ugly head. But I think we're a long ways out 
from that actually happening, um, given sort of the, the low growth environment and the low inflation environment that we're currently in.